Welcome to Americans, the show where going south means things are getting better. I'm your host, Roberto Lovato. They call themselves Maya. Some in the younger generation call themselves Mayan Americans. Some speak only Spanish and still others speak only English. But regardless of whether they're facing challenges to their way of life in the fishing communities of Massachusetts or in the farming communities of Nebraska or in the urban communities like South Central LA, the people gathered at this 25th annual meeting of Mayan leaders agree on one thing. They agree on the need to preserve and expand the millennial mission at the heart of Mayan culture. This 25th annual meeting of Mayan leaders continues to grow, and it's taking place at a time when the Mayan population itself is growing in many parts of the country. At the heart of this year's meeting is the issue of Mayan youth and the challenge of passing on the knowledge that, like the maíz or maize, will grow in the United States. Juanatano Cano, one of the organizers of the meeting, came to the U.S. under circumstances resembling those that brought hundreds of thousands of other Maya to places like Los Angeles. But unlike the immigration stories that many of us grew up with, the immigration story of Juanatano and the other Maya didn't involve the pursuit of an American dream. Instead, it involved fleeing a U.S. foreign policy nightmare. Why did you migrate to the, to the U.S. and to Los Angeles? Well, I uh, migrated here because, uh, first of all, when the time that I grew up, there was a uh, civil war mm -hmm. going in Guatemala, even though a lot of people don't say that it is a, a civil war. But for mm -hmm. us, it was a kind of a civil war. Mm -hmm. Even though some people, uh, they said that there was no genocide, but for us, mm -hmm. like, we don't know how to call it. When you see a whole town of people being wiped up, mm -hmm. yeah, a whole town, like, even like military coming to a whole town and like killing them off. I don't know how to, I don't have no name for that. Except, but, yeah, except, except for, yeah, but for me, genocide. except for us, it's genocide. And one mm -hmm. thing, and two, I couldn't live in that environment, mm -hmm. seeing my neighbors, seeing maybe relatives being killed. And it's like, what's going on in here? Mm -hmm. I felt like the next one is going to be me, but the next person they're going to come after is going to be my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. And I told my mom and my dad, let's get out of here. Mm -hmm. And then mom and dad said, no, you can't. You have to stay here. Mm -hmm. We have to stay here. If someone comes and kills us, might as well just kill us all. So that's one of the reasons. And then I went into the big city. I would say, I would... When you see people that call themselves Latino, but you see their face, you see some of the way they talk. Yeah. Do you see people that are could be Maya too? In their in but they don't embrace it in a way? They like, prefer to they? yeah, they prefer to dress like maybe uh, like uh, any 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 Latino. Mm -hmm. But then like but mom and dad is not Latino. <laughs> mom and dad didn't they know some of them didn't speak uh, Spanish at all. <laughs> they have their own native language. Mm -hmm. And then the kids are having this uh, conflict, this cultural conflict. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when they have like go to uh, Maya gatherings. They are like dancing their own music, their own marimba. They have own way of dancing marimba. But then, like when they do this, like, the kids say, "Like, what's wrong? Why don't they dance uh, like modern music or, or classic music?" But why mm. is that my parents are doing this? So the kids, they were start having this like cultural shame about their their culture themselves mm -hmm. and their parents. So this was kind of the language that camera they were having here in the United States. I'm telling like, maybe um, 15 years ago or 10 years ago, and that's when the reason we're coming here and have the kids share their experience. What's going on mm -hmm. with them? What they're going through? So that's going to bring them, now we bring them together. Their parents are here, the youngs are over here, and we're talking about this kind of stuff, our stories, our life experiences, and mm -hmm. that's, uh, what, that's what we're doing with these young people that are here in mm. this conference. Para el Maya, todo inicia donde todo termina, y todo termina en donde todo inicia. To deal with the conflict facing Mayan youth, Gano and Mayan leaders developed materials that inspired and raised their consciousness about the transformative power of their culture, a culture that has survived and grown for millennia. So it would have to be to bring people together? Yes, from, from different, different parts states. Of the uh -huh. Uh -huh. Born and raised in central Los Angeles, Karim Ventura is a walking, talking, and praying symbol of both the challenges and the potential of the Mayan future. I want to talk to you about, like, what is it like growing up Maya in central LA? For me, it's very, 
I, I would say not so much difficult, but in a way, in a sense, yes, it is difficult. Like how? Um, there's only buildings, houses, not enough trees, not enough nature, mm -hmm. not enough space to actually feel free. And is this growing, you think, in your community generally? Yes. People trying to rescue and maintain or keep, you know, preserving what you have? I think it is. Mm -hmm. Where, where do you see it? Where do I see it? Mm -hmm. With our own communities. Mm -hmm. And how do you With see it? With our own communities, there's more young people wearing the cortes, mm -hmm. uh, learning to dance, mm -hmm. uh, speaking the language. Mm -hmm. But it's also thanks to the parents because we, we've also asked for them to please do so. We need that from them because mm -hmm. we can't teach ourselves. We need to, something from them. Mm -hmm. They know, but they don't want to tell us. But we ask them, we beg them, please tell us, we want to know. Todo el mundo maya es diferente al mundo occidental. Todo. Y para entenderlo, hay que pensar como maya. The cultural seeds planted at the meeting are centered in Mayan relationships and in their sacred texts, known as the Códices. Thanks to the learning of previous meetings and to the learning she gained from the Códices, Karin is now a leader of her people one of the few Maya, youth or adult, who can speak at the table of elders, one of the primary leadership bodies of the Maya. Tell me, when you first started reading the Codices, what did that feel like to you? I wanted to learn more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then how could I say I know myself when I, I don't even know? And what happened when you really started taking in and learn, getting the knowledge? I knew what I, I had to do. I knew what I need to do and where I'm going, where am I headed to. It gives me strength mm -hmm. inside and mostly passion. For the sake of Maya in the United States generally, and for the sake of the rest of us, we should all hope that the Maya are successful in preserving, expanding, and sharing their millennial culture with us. Difficult, even apocalyptic times like ours need such a millennial culture. For Americans, I'm Roberto Lovato.